guys, Dempsey here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite experiences from my trip to Iceland and that is snorkeling Silfra. I got a lot of really positive feedback about my Blue Lagoon video which I will link for you guys in the description box below if you haven't seen that already. And so I figured I would make a couple of other videos about some of my favorite experiences from my trip to Iceland. Today we will be talking about snorkeling Silfra, everything that you need to know, what to expect, and whether or not you should add it to your itinerary on your trip to Iceland. Without further ado, let's get into it. Silfra is a fissure located between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. It is located in national park not even going to attempt to say that which is located about an hour outside of Reykjavik it was formed in 1789 due to movements of the tectonic plates within the park and it actually continues to move apart at a rate of two centimeters per year there's a couple of things that make Silfra so special and unique, one of which is how clear the water is. The water is so clear that underwater visibility extends for over 100 meters or 328 feet. The water itself is made up of glacial meltwater from a nearby glacier, and it travels underground for over 100 years through porous lava, which acts as a filtration process. Because of this long filtration process, the water in Silfra is the clearest in the world and it is also drinkable. Because the water travels underground, it is able to maintain a constant temperature of about two to three degrees Celsius, which is sitting just above freezing, so the water actually never freezes over. Silfra is also the only place in the world where you're able to snorkel or dive between two tectonic plates. Like most activities in Iceland, I highly recommend that you book your Silfra snorkeling slash diving tour in advance. There's a bunch of different companies that offer snorkeling and diving tours, which you should be able to find through a simple Google search. From what I could tell, most of the snorkeling tours cost around 130 to 140 US dollars per person. Our tour met at 10 a.m. and once we were all checked in and signed our waivers, we were fitted in our dry suits. After that, our tour guides went over how everything was going to work and some safety precautions and just made sure that everyone felt comfortable with what they were about to experience because obviously there's some nerves going around because we were about to be jumping in some very cold water. After that, we headed over to the entry point of Silfra and this is where there was a bit of waiting around. Like I said, there's a bunch of different companies that offer tours and most of them happen around the same time. So there was a little bit of a line to get into the water because obviously they don't want a ton of people in the water at once. So once it was our turn to get in the water, there's a platform where you stand and our tour guides had us test our mask and snorkels just by putting our faces in the water, which also allowed us to adjust to how cold it was. Once we made sure that all of our equipment was working, we got in the water and we were off. There is a slight current that kind of propels you forward, but you also are able to kick or frog kick with your legs to move you forward as well. Altogether, we spent about 40 minutes in the water just enjoying the scenery and once we reached the exit point, we crawled out and we walked all the way back to the parking lot where we changed and enjoyed some hot cocoa. Like I mentioned earlier, the water sits just above freezing, so it is cold. But as someone who is constantly cold and who is really nervous about the cold water, I don't think that this should deter you from the experience. The dry suit does a really good job of not only keeping you dry, but keeping you warm. It's sealed at your neck and at your wrists, so no water should be getting in basically from your neck down. The only parts of your body that will get wet are your hands, your face, obviously, and your head slash hair. My hands were the only thing that did get pretty cold, but our guides recommended that we keep them behind our backs out of the water, and that helped a lot. I had read that putting your face in the water was the worst thing in the world, that it was excruciatingly painful and felt like knives stabbing into your face, and it wasn't. It was cold, but within a few minutes, my face was numb and I was good to go. 
I was pretty anxious about the entire experience. I get really bad anxiety in open water. I don't like being cold and I also tend to get claustrophobic and I personally did not have an issue. If you start to get nervous or you need a break, you can always flip onto your back and float and that can just give you a couple of minutes to calm down and relax a little bit. That being said, this is just my experience and if you do have a history of anxiety or panic attacks or you get claustrophobic really easily, I would definitely bring it up with your guides so that they are aware and they can help you through the experience. Unfortunately, snorkeling sulfur is not for everyone. First and foremost, you do need to be able to swim. This sounds obvious, but maybe it's not. You're not necessarily swimming in the traditional sense of the word because the dry suits are really buoyant, but yes, you do need to be able to swim. You shouldn't have any underlying health conditions. You should be in good health and you can't be pregnant. You must be at least 12 years of age and weigh 45 kilograms. And of course you'd need to be able to fit into the equipment itself. If you have any questions or you're just concerned whether or not it's right for you, I highly recommend reaching out to the individual tour companies because they should be able to answer any questions that you might have. If you're interested in taking photos or videos of your experience, I highly recommend bringing a fully charged GoPro. Big emphasis on the fully charged part of that sentence. The cold water can quickly zap a GoPro's battery, so you definitely wanna make sure that your batteries are 100% charged before you get in the water. Our GoPro recorded the entire time and we did not run out of battery. Granted, we do have a newer version of a GoPro, so if you have an older version, just be aware that, like I said, the cold water could use up the battery. Most tour companies will also bring their own GoPros to take photos of you throughout the experience if you aren't interested in carrying a GoPro for the entire time. The underwater geography and scenery at Silfra is absolutely stunning, but you should not expect to see any marine life or fish. I think that this is a pretty common misconception when people go to snorkel or dive Silfra because most of the time when people go to snorkel or dive, they are going to see marine life and fish, and that is just not the case here. Ironically, my boyfriend did see one fish, but our guide said that that is extremely rare. Not being able to see marine life should not deter you from this experience at all. Like I said, the underwater geography is magnificent and it is one of the most beautiful things that I've seen in my entire life. But you should make sure that your expectations are in line with what you will be seeing and that is not marine life. Like I said earlier, snorkeling Silfra was one of my favorite experiences on our entire two week trip to Iceland. If you have the means and you meet the physical requirements, I cannot recommend it enough. It was one of the most beautiful things that I've seen in my entire life. Such a unique experience and I am so happy that we fit it into our itinerary on our trip to Iceland. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed today's deep dive into snorkeling Silfra. If you're new here and you're not already subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you would hit that subscribe button down below. I post new videos every single week. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.